Hello and welcome back to the Lawn Association YouTube channel. Today's video is some real facts about lawn mowing. So, lawn mowing. We all do it actually, um, well generally if you've got a lawn of course, and there are lots of different ways to mow a lawn and we're obviously told a lot of different ways um, as well, especially by people like lawn mower manufacturers who are lawn mower manufacturers, they're not lawn experts. So when it comes to an idea of what you want to achieve on a lawn, you sort of have to go back. When you think about it, um, you know, lawn mowing is obviously very modern day, but the first types of lawn mowers were probably, probably back in medieval times where people actually kept the animals, for example, inside their dwellings. Uh, obviously that was their food source, but they kept the sheep and the, the livestock inside, which mowed the grass, which was probably the first type of lawn. I'm not, I'm, don't quote me on that, but obviously... So when we sort of think about lawn mowing today, we tend to sort of think that um, good lawn mowing must be manicured, um, which, which is absolutely untrue. Um, you know, good lawn mowing practices can be whether you want a nice lawn, or even a beautiful lawn, but it doesn't require what we started out with. Now, we started out in 1827, um, back when the likes of Alan Titchmarsh and Monty Don were born. Um, <laughs> that's a joke. They were born a couple of years after that, actually. Um, but when you think about the first mower that was invented, it was a cylinder mower. And normally, the way a lot of practices evolve, we end up with a sort of high-tech machines in modern day, in 2023. Um, but in fact, with lawnmowers, we've almost gone backwards. That same technology that was developed in 1827 um, was, is still used today. And that's quite unique. Um, but obviously we've brought in different types of mowers nowadays to suit the types of lawn we want. But when we go back to understanding lawns back in 1827 and even up to probably the 1990s, we had, in fact, our whole country is covered in, in the grass species that we talk about a lot on this channel, which is fescues and bents, because that covers the whole of the country. In the 1990s, um, commercial enterprises, strangely enough, um, developed, and I mean developed, uh, a form of cattle feed, which we call ryegrass, and that was cattle feed. So they basically took that grass species and made it a little bit finer, and everybody thinks that uh, that's the only grass to use. Um, whereas when you go back to understanding principles of lawn mowing, what you actually understand with our natural fescues and bents that it's a pruning device. So when, just like the top of a hedge for example, when the top of a hedge um, grows, we cut it off and then the sides get thicker. That's exactly what fescues and bents do. So the more we mow them, the thicker they get. When you go to the cattle feed ryegrass scenario, that plant never develops. So you're not actually pruning that plant ever. It's just one of the simple facts. Um, it, as I say, it grows vertically very quickly and you have to put these plants into your lawn. But when you prune native grasses, your fescues and bents, they actually react to pruning. And we prune in two, two to three different ways. We obviously mow, which is a pruning technique. Uh, we verticut and we scarify. They're three sort of pruning techniques, technically two. Um, but they only generally work, or they only will work, on native grasses. If you've got a lawnmower company that are telling you to verticut ryegrass, all you're gonna be doing is cleaning the sward out. That's all you do. If you want more plants in there, you've got to put them in there. You've got to scarify, you've got to top dress, you've got to overseed, you've got to do all those, all that work for you. But when you prune native bents and fescues, every time you mow, your lawn gets thicker. And every time you verticut or scarify, your lawn will eventually get thicker as well. So understanding the principles of lawn mowing is, is quite simple if you've got the right grass species. So um, 
today, what we're going to show you today, just a, a little bit of uh, understanding. We're on the dog lawn, and if you pan around and have a little look at this lawn, we've done nothing, we don't do anything to this. This had one application of true grass, as you, as you possibly know, on February the 14th. But if you want to sort of understand lawn care, um, proper experts make lawn care very simple. Um, you know, running, although I was fortunate enough to run one of the best golf courses in the world, you understood the plant and you actually made it do the work. When you work with ryegrass, if you understand it, and everybody who does, um, I suppose is very pro ryegrass, they are enthusiasts and they do do a lot of hours. But as you can see with this lawn here, we cut this once a week. Um, we fed it on February the 14th of this year, 2023. We're now in almost in mid-August and the lawn is quite nice. It's done nothing. We've no, there's no more feed. It's not had a drop of water the, other than what's come out of the sky. Um, it's not had a herbicide. It never would. Um, so all we've done is make, uh, previously make, soils work and make the plant the correct plants work which is really really easy so as i say um, if you want to learn about lawn mowing it's good to have the right species because again it's going to do all the work for you so we're not we're not looking at power control we're not looking at verti cutting there's actually percentage of power in here is about about one percent um, that's because this grass grows uh, stone oliferously like this so the weeds don't actually get a chance so what we've done on this lawn just as a bit of a trial to show people the difference we've cut at three different heights on here so what you are stood on right now is cut on number three on our lovely little battery powered stegama and it's probably about 25 30 mil we've then got an area over here which uh, obviously my cat's enjoying there which is more like sort of 35 to 40 mil and then if you come back over to here we've got probably an area that's being cut up 50 to 55 millimeters as well and there's a little bit of difference in between them as well which is highlighted a lot better when uh, it's had a cut um, this is cut once a week as I say and uh, there's no food happening. This is just good growth with the correct plant uh, and the plant doing all the work for us. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna cut this particular strip and then explain a little bit about what we've actually got. So, we're just giving that a trim. As I say, this is about 25, 30 mil. And you'd have a lot of people going, well, you know, this piece of turf, you come and have a look at this piece of turf. It's quite thick. It's quite lush. It's quite green. It's quite nice. But we've got little bits of lateral growth, this grass creeping sideways. And you'll get some people saying, oh, you need a verti cutter on it. Um, do you? Do you really? If you've got rye grass and you're verti cutting, you're not pruning the plant, you're not particularly benefiting because you're not rolling a ball on it. Verti cutting was introduced and designed purely for putting surfaces. That's what it was designed for. Uh, of course people will sell them. Um, especially those obsessed with the idea of trying to get rid of poor annual or annual meadow grass. But as a standard lawn, this is being cut on a weekly basis at about 25 to 30 millimetres. I don't use the third, the one third rule, and nobody has come back to me with their diagnosis of how they quantify the one third rule in their 
uh, lawn mowing world because it's poppycock. Um, even golf course managers don't use the one third rule. It's just something that's been said out there uh, and it's stuck. Uh, a bit like moss killer. That doesn't exist either. So when you look at this, 25, 30 mil, cut once a week, a dog lawn. It's purely a dog lawn, but if you come and look, one thing you will notice is this doesn't have many weeds at all. There's not been a herbicide on here, certainly uh, since we've owned the property. Got a teeny bit of buttercup coming in from that place over there. But what you can see by the height that we're cutting is every time it grows up, because this is about the right height for a sort of a nice standard domestic lawn, you get a lot more creeping grasses. So you get a lot more um, weed suppression. Um, and that's the one thing about all of these three different bits of grass is they all have a different combination. So when people talk about um, no mo may as an example, which is a bit of a waste of time in my opinion, but if you want to um, mow and gain weeds, you can see on this part over here, we're not going to mow this now, but if you come over to here, by mowing at about two to three or maybe two to two and a half inches, we've got a lot of clover coming in, we've got buttercup, we've got some lovely pink flowers down here, we've got some dandelions, we've got uh, some daisies, we've got a mixture of everything. So the weeds can still flower uh, and they can still do their bit uh, for the environment as well. But you do need that species of grass. If you go with ryegrass, uh, it certainly won't look like that um, because you still get the pruning uh, technique within this sort of uh, lawn species. So you're still getting some density. The plants, um, the grass plants are still uh, doing their little bit and they're still giving you a lawn that is more grass than weed. And then if you come over to this bit, which is cut a little bit higher, as I say, this is about 40 millimeters. You've got a little bit more weed, but still you've still got that control because it's being cut monthly. You've still got a lot more control on the weed. So at the moment, you know, if you said that there was 5% weed in there, you've probably got 10 to 15% in here. And over on the longer bit, you've probably got more like uh, 20%. So the way you manage and the height of cut that you do will give you a lawn that, that can be maintained sustainably. Apologies about the dogs having a little flitty at the moment. Um, it's always the little ones, isn't it? Um, um, but what you can see is depending on what you want to achieve out of your lawn, you know, this is cut with a, a lovely Steger battery mower, so we've got no emissions at all. Uh, we've got a one feed lawn at this present time. As I say, this is not a show lawn, this is a dog lawn, but uh, as you can see from here, um, this could look quite pretty uh, as a lawn. No cylinder mowing, there's certainly no verti cutting, because what is the point? Um, you know, we've got this obsession with cylinder mowers in the, in the UK and the sort of finish that they can achieve, yet we put what is sort of similar to cattle feed on them and try and maintain that, which is a little bit odd. Yeah, if you want cylinder mowers, these are the sort of grasses you actually want because you can turn this into a bowling green. You won't turn a rye grass sward into a bowling green at all. Um, but as you can see, this is very nice. This would suit some people as well. And this longer grass would suit some as well. Excuse me while I intervene. This is not exactly lawn care, but hey, 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 hey. So we, we apologize there. We had a little bit of a sound problem, which is now in my arms. Um, so there's a YouTube debut for this pretty little man. Um, one thing I just wanted to point down here, just in front of the cat. Now, obviously during the spring uh, and late spring at that, we had some uh, very dry weather. And uh, as you can see around here, 
uh, if you've watched any other videos, um, when you talk about annual meadow grass control, uh, all this died off. Um, and you can see around here, around my feet, this is sort of, this area is the one we normally show. And all this sort of power annua died off. But as you can see, with a little bit of rain, it's all started to come back. So if you think power annua control is in your lawn care, uh, it's possibly worth thinking again. If you point back down to that lawn, which has got less than sort of 1% um, annual meadow grass in it, that's a far better grass species. Obviously around here we've got concrete, uh, that's a drain cover obviously, so there's very little you can do there because uh, once you get shallow soils like that, there's only so much you can do because uh, hot weather will burn it off very quickly. Now, one thing that we just wanted to show you, uh, it's a little bit late, um, purely for COVID reasons. Uh, we both suffered with uh, COVID down here, so we haven't been in a film too much recently, but just wanted to give an update on the meadow. And there we are. If, uh, if you remember anything about some of the videos that we had, on this meadow. Um, again, this is an idea of another type of lawn. People don't think this is a lawn, but uh, it's full of grass. Um, it's a type of lawn. You know, we, we obviously call it a meadow, but uh, essentially it's just a longer piece of grass that we don't mow very often. And we overseeded this, as you uh, remember, with wildflower mix to see whether we could get a combination of the two. Now, with some of the heavy rain that we've had, um, it's not the greatest time. It's a couple of weeks too late presently. But if you come down here, you can start to see that prior to this grass falling over, we had lots of daisies in here. We had some... Um, pinky purple flowers down there as well but an enormous amount of daisies in here but what you can see with the extra growth that we've had this year is that some of this long grass is actually um, well I'm, I'm very close to six foot I'm sure um, <laughs> and manly obviously right now um, but some of this is, is obviously gone up six or seven feet tall because of the uh, weather so in terms of competing with grass, you know, was our little plan successful? To some degree, possibly yes. Um, but what nature provided was uh, an awful lot of growing weather for, for this grass species, which um, even though, as I say, you can, if you look in the bottom of some of this, we've got five to 10% um, wildflower in there. But of course, it's grown so much that we can't physically see most of it now, and especially as some of it's actually going over as well. So we've even got some poppy down here as well. Um, but a lot of the lower growing uh, wildflowers just literally have been eaten away by um, the, the extra grass growth that we've had. Um, and as I say, I'm, I'm six foot tall, nearly, um, with, with four inch heels on anyway. Um, and as you can see, you know, some of this is taller than me. So, so was it successful? To some degree, yes. Um, it does go to prove one point of, of which we were trying to show. We were trying to get a meadow that would allow uh, wildflower to come inside and mix with the grass and to some degree that's worked um, but not as well as we perhaps would have hoped. Um, does that give us uh, another uh, idea for next year? Well after we probably have a conversation with the grass people at some point uh, we may look to introduce things like yellow rattle which might help compete a bit better um, although there are obviously horror stories when it comes to having too much of that as well so was it a success uh, given that there's a lot more probably in there than you can see on the camera i would say to some degree it was successful uh, but it showed 
the power of grass. Um, obviously with the rain we've had, it's, it's very, very green underneath. It's very, very golden on top, which can look quite fetching at the same time. Um, but yes, there, there was a lot of flower. Would we do it again slightly differently? Probably next year we'll try something different. Um, what that is, I don't know. We're not bona fide wildflower experts, but uh, you can certainly see that the scarification we did on there made the grass grow a little bit too well. So uh, that is yet to be called successful. Um, but anyway, um, that's today's video. As I say, it's a little bit of uh, some real facts, R-E-E-L, obviously. Some real facts about lawn mowing and the fact that you can play around with the different heights, you can play around even with irregular, slightly irregular mowing patterns at the same time. And what that's gonna do is create a type of lawn that you may want. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but the principles are exactly the same. So if you are a cylinder mower, for example, or you like cylinder mowing lawn, it doesn't mean, you know, we're, we're not trying to criticize um, cylinder mowers, but, it's a lot easier if you've got the right grass species, for sure. That's an absolute fact. And what you will learn from this is the way that cylinder mowers or what they were actually designed for. They were designed as another form of uh, pruning on our native grasses. So if you've got rye grass on your, on your um, lawn and you're cutting with a cylinder, you might possibly find it a little bit more luxurious uh, and easy to do if you uh, chose the right grass species. But as I say, just because, um, just because rye grass is out there and it's hard work, some people are obviously quite into that hard work. Um, we're certainly not, and no expert ever is. It's all about making lawn care a little bit simpler. But anyway, that's been today's video. Um, we're glad to be back after COVID. Um, this one's been very quiet. Uh, if you do like the video, um, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to follow um, or find some more videos, then do subscribe as well. Um, if you want to learn a little bit about lawn care, then go over to our website and check out the online learning course. We do have a new homeowner one coming on uh, online very soon as well, which uh, will be for those not quite wanting as much advice, but very simplified advice again. So uh, keep your eye out for that. Other than that, the sun has been out today and um, we may get a few more videos done before the end of the autumn. See you soon.